Okay. Yeah. And and, and okay. And hold on. I'm ready. Um. Accept that. Can I just read this? No. We were there for nine days. We had a shot list with over a thousand items on it. Thirteen chapters. Sixty videos in total. It was exhausting. One of the very first courses that we made together was Tokyo Demystified. Johnny and Iz wrote this course and they went to Tokyo and filmed this course themselves. And this course now lives on our website after weeks of us all editing it and working on it together. And it's something that we're really proud of. Today in this video, I call Johnny and we just sit down and talk for a little bit about his experience writing this very first course and what it was like to go to Tokyo. It was a huge undertaking and Johnny shares a little bit about how difficult it was, some of the things that he loved and some of the things he learned and gives you a little peek behind what it was really like being there and filming it. So I hope that you enjoy this conversation. It was really fun to hear. Let's sit back and relax and let's hear from Johnny. So since it was the very first course that you wrote or that you guys made at all, how much writing went in beforehand before you went to Tokyo? Man, we wrote the entire thing word for word and it, we did it all on one Google Doc. So it ended up being a 125 page document with a bunch of like color coding. It was just a massive beast. Like we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, but I knew what I wanted it to be. Like I knew the story I wanted to tell. Usually a script is like five or six pages. It was 125 pages because it wasn't a normal video like I was used to doing. And so eventually we, we broke it out into chapters, which made a lot more sense. And those were still monsters. And then we sort of riffed when we got on the ground because things obviously change when you get on the ground. We're not doing any udon on cam. We're gonna just change the BO depending on how it goes. While you were there and you were referencing all of your notes and everything that you had written, how difficult was it to schedule and keep in your brain, everything happening all at the same time? Incredibly difficult. Like it was, so I've done a lot of field shoots before, but my field shoots are usually like focused on a couple of stories and I'm just getting like a few key visuals. Like for borders or for any of the explainers I do, it, it's always like get a few major visuals. For this, it was like not as deep of stories because we're sort of explaining uh, how the train works or explaining like the history of the tea ceremony, but it's like get a thousand visuals in nine days. Coordinating all of that throughout Tokyo with children was, was a monster of a thing. And we had this giant shot list of hundreds and hundreds of shots. And we were just like, okay, hey, we got this, we got this. We had to go to all the neighborhoods because we wanted to visually demystify all the neighborhoods so someone could like really know where they want to stay. And so we ended up hitting like every corner of Tokyo. Oh, it was exhausting. It honestly is like, I want to go back to Tokyo and like enjoy it because it was so, it was just like running around the whole time. It was still amazing, but it was, it was just intense. What did making this huge intense course teach you about right trip there are certain things about a city that really deserve to be visual no book no blog post can do justice to and some of those things are practical like riding the train like you really want to see the symbols and the lines and the map and really see someone go through it like you can't read about that and understand it and then other stuff is like you want to see and understand ramen and like really see how it's made and really see the artistry of it to understand it. It renewed my faith in the, the mission of this whole thing, which is like, can we bring travel into a more visual, smart format instead of like the sort of travel book, which is like a list of things you should do, but not necessarily an illuminating, immersive experience of learning about a place before you go. Was there any major hiccups or mishaps? I mean, there were so many little ones, just like not getting footage. I think I got lost one time and Izzy, we got like separated and like I had the stroller and like it was this nightmare of a thing because uh, we couldn't find each other and we were, on, we were in like a 15 layer mall. I was like, the dot on Google Maps says I'm right on top of you, but you're like somewhere in, in these 15 floors and I'm not really sure which one. Anyway, so there was a lot of that, but overall... We came away with a lot of amazing footage and I was very happy with like everything we got. One of my favorite moments that like I really pinched myself was in the food section. We got to go back 
in the kitchens of three ramen shops. We had a fixer there who was like helping us with ramen and he brought us back and like we, we got to see these like ramen operations and they're so different. All of them are so different. All of them have different specialties and different ingredients and the care that they would take to assemble these bowls. Uh, it was like an art. It was like so beautiful and so fun and it gave me this appreciation. Like when I see a bowl of ramen, I appreciate it so much more now because I was like back there filming with in, in the back of these in the back of these ramen shops. Another really sort of illuminating experience for me was uh, learning about the difference between a shrine, like a Meiji shrine, which is one of the religions in Japan, versus a Buddhist temple. They kind of look the same, but as soon as you know what to look for, they look totally different. We visited both and we sort of explain them in the religion chapter, but I had so much fun going there in the Buddhist temple specifically. They light incense and they put it in this like common central sand pit and doing that surrounded by other people who are there. Some were just visitors, some were there to worship, some were there to you know talk to their ancestors. And then it was like us like just there to witness and like my and Henry uh, who was six at the time was just so enthralled by this like in, this incense that was like blowing smoke everywhere it was really beautiful and it and it made me realize that like visually understanding a place is such a universal desire for anyone whether it's like a child or like an older person like we all want to understand stuff and being there with my kids really helped me keep in touch with that like very human impulse to like understand what you're seeing and where it came from and why. Did you, after like writing the course and going there and filming it, did you walk away with a different view of Japan or of Tokyo? I, after this whole experience, feel like I really understood major building blocks of at least culture in Tokyo. We delved into the customs and like I visited Japan before and like sort of knew about some of the customs, but doing it at this level of like deep research, we had a local consultant who was helping us, was a whole different animal. Like I, I was understanding so much of the nuance of customs and also that like as a foreigner, you don't have to take them as seriously, but like it's respectful if you do. And like all these, all these nuances that were, that I think I would have never learned if I just read sort of a quick list. So I walked away with a much deeper understanding of that, uh, a much deeper understanding of the food. Like, you know, Japanese food, it's all around the world, but understanding sushi and the different types of sushi from like fast food sushi to like medium scale to like the high end experience. I was like, wow, not all sushi is the same. And in fact, these, these are such different formats and it's all called sushi. Yeah, I, I feel like my understanding of Japan is so much richer after being in the trenches researching this and learning about it and filming and producing it. It was exhausting. It was exhausting, but it was also like, you just do it once and then it's done. And now it's, that what's there, it's a course, it lives and people can use it for years to come. You know, we weren't reviewing restaurants, it's, it's evergreen. And so it's like really exciting that like, that's a resource now for people. I hope that you enjoyed that conversation and if you wanted to learn more about ramen or the shrines or anything else about Tokyo, we have it all in that course and you can actually buy just sections of the course if you want on our website. So head over to brighttrip.com and we'll catch you over there. See ya!